Good morning, my name is Jane Scarf, and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And I wanna to talk to you today about PSYOPs and controlled opposition. And the reason I wanna talk about both of them together is because they are related. There's, there's, a, there's a correlation between the two. Uh, first, I wanna talk about PSYOPs and their purpose and what I know about um, the methodology in using them and the purpose that they have for using them. And uh, primarily a PSYOP is a, a dramatic event that is, is designed to frighten us and uh, make us think that we have no no way of stopping this, no way of controlling it, and uh, and uh, it, it signals or or uh, in, induces a, a strong a fear reaction. And the, the psyop is used by the communists, globalists, who are are intent on establishing a one world. A communist country and Canada is definitely on their on their scope on their on their uh, is best basic <laughs> is effectively a target for their uh, for their plan and starting way back in the late 60s early 70s Canada is being being um, infiltrated and is being prepared or was being prepared and still is um, prepared uh, to become a communist state and uh, I mean it could have been uh, going on before that but that's the first uh, period of time that I'm aware that this was going on and this was under the leadership of Pierre Elliott Trudeau and he did a whack of things to open the door for for the communists to come in and uh, some of that preparation uh, was specifically with the Charter because the Charter is a weak uh, vehicle to, to help protect our rights because Section 1 says the government can override your rights if they have good enough reason. Problem being is they can just do it like that without going through Parliament and without consulting the public or anything. And then you have to go through a very expensive long drawn out process of a constitutional challenge and get a judge to tell you or to give you back your rights. If you can even do that, because don't forget, a judge is a government employee. So what you have is government violating your rights. You're going to court to get a judge to ask the judge if there's a good enough reason or, or a justified reason to override the rights. So good luck with that. And in this case with uh, COVID, you would also have to get into a very expensive, drawn out process of challenging the public health narrative. So you, you're a competition between what they're saying and what other, other physicians and uh, uh, scientists are saying. So what would we want to have uh, that as a process for? Obviously the public wasn't uh, properly consulted and uh, you know, so that's a that's a very dangerous document. I won't get into it now, but we do have a a, a counter um, a counter piece of legislation that can help protect our rights, and it's the Canadian Bill of Rights, and it's still in effect. It was not superseded by the Charter because Section Twenty Six of the Charter says any rights that preexisted the Charter are still in effect, so we're good. Also, the nineteen eighty eight Emergency Act, which replaced the War Measures Act that Trudeau used for his rampage, uh, was uh, replaced with the Emergency Act, and that's 1988. And in that uh, piece of legislation, it says the government must respect the Canadian Bill of Rights and they can't abridge those rights, even in the case of a national emergency. So we have really solid laws, federal laws, and there's, there are no martial law. Uh, provisions so this is this is why the province is trying to slip in the uh, 
martial law through these bylaws. Like, can you imagine? Like, borders with bylaws and close your business with bylaws and your, your home, restricting the people in your, amount of people in your home, uh, breaking up your protest, closing your churches with bylaws. Like, like no. Anyways, I, I digress. Uh, getting back to the, you know, the process that was used or is and is still being used in Canada to bring in communism. Uh, just tweaking our laws and manipulating the 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 statutes uh, so so that they can be um, uh, used to to uh, to have decisions and legislation brought in that don't rest on our uh, basic philosophy or our basic um, uh, political uh, framework and including our rights. So they have to get rid of our rights and they have to get rid of our democracy. That's the two, uh, the two things they're after. And Trudeau did quite a rampage in his time. He managed to put us in martial law for 16 years. And again, I'll, I'll do that in the future. I'll do a, a more detailed, uh, or if anybody wants detail on that, uh, my email is mjslegalservices at yahoo.com. But anyways, back to the topic for today is PSYOPs. If uh, you look at a couple of interviews and a lecture by a former KGB agent uh, that w went public in 1984, they're on Google. You could just Google uh, KGB agent 1984 and you get a bunch of videos from him. And there's one interview and there's one lecture a lecture at Harvard, I believe it was, that really gives you an in-depth picture of of the of the strategy they use. But one of the one of the uh, important strategies is to demoralize, to create conflict and disruption. So you see that happening all the time with Antifa and Yellow Vest, or uh, any any even men and women. Like what you, what they do is they. They infiltrate with extremists on both sides and then agitate. And, and there's no way for resolution. They're, they're always, you know, pumping this division. And any, any uh, number of other uh, topics and, and uh, categories of people uh, fighting is, is what they want. And, and then further to that, they want to demoralize the population. They want to make you think... Uh, you know, the government um, uh, actions are beyond our control at all times. Um, and the PSYOP in particular is meant to undermine and make us lose confidence and create fear in us, anger and fear, which are related um, towards our government and our police. And that helps them, you know, wiggle the way in. And uh, UN, of course, is part of this whole process, and they just love to say, oh, well, we'll establish the government to bring peace to your country. Yeah, right. So uh, <clears throat> the PSYOP, I'll give you an example of, of uh, one situation that I firmly believe was a PSYOP, and I'm not going to say who and, and you know, um, what all the context was, but... Uh, the situation with um, Adams and Barbecue, uh, the the what we saw, the drama drama of what we saw was in mainstream media and it was on Rebel News and all over the internet, and what they showed you is police violating rights severely, using violence, using force. They they. Um, shut uh, like they issued an order uh, to close the the uh, the restaurant and he didn't close so the next day they came in and beefed it up by having public health occupy the property absolutely no b legal basis for her to do that dr davila and then they they invoked the trespass to property act uh and charged uh charged Adam with trespassing and then he still didn't leave so they, they upped it and, <clears throat> and charged him with uh, obstruct police. So uh, what we have uh, is, is an illegal content and then he used horses and, and 
like hundreds of, of police officers to make this big clash with the public and uh, and some of the speakers of the day were ah 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 those police arr, arr, and they revved up the crowd and they they did get some uh, physical it didn't break out completely but there was some physical clash you know which helps the dramatic scene and uh, it it helps invoke the fear in the public and specifically they wanted businesses to think oh uh, I'm, I don't want that. I don't want to open and have horses and police and criminal charges and my customers dragged out of the store or, or uh, business, whatever it was. So it, it worked very nicely and it worked on me. I was like, oh my God, we're, you know, now we're in martial law. Look what the police are doing, blah, blah, blah. And then wait, when the dust settled, turns out that that was not Toronto police that went in there. They could have went in there under the BS bylaws, uh, the COVID stuff, gave them the authority to bash in and close a gathering, remove people, lock the premises, all that. But they're not doing that. They, they didn't. And that was there since day one of, of the first round of, of, um, of uh, bylaws, uh, COVID bylaws. Uh, so they didn't do that. So what's going on here? What's going on is... John Tory, mayor of Toronto, put an advertisement out to hire off-duty police officers as private security. So he created the whole, the whole scenario. And I guess whatever repercussions later was worth it. It was worth it to have that dramatic effect on everybody and that demoralizing effect. And then there's, there's been many others that I, I suspect are, are also uh, psyops. Uh, what's going on with uh, Church of God and uh, Art Pulowski in uh, Alberta and uh, uh, possibly other ones, but those ones I'm pretty convinced because of the dynamic of it. Uh, <clears throat> what they've done is, uh, in those cases, is they've, they start like Adamson's. They, and, and Adamson's also, uh, they got um, injunctions and then enforcement and all that so for for art or for uh church of god they started with a closure for the church then an injunction then breach of court order and then enforcement and <clears throat> they introduced the charter knowing full well the charter cannot be used to stop that prog progression of of uh of of uh, legal intervention they had an option of the Canadian Bill of Rights, which doesn't require you to invoke it and have a separate hearing for it. It establishes your rights in the immediate and, and there's no justifiable reason, which is the way why the charter can screw around or they can screw around with the charter because they have to find out if there was a justifiable reason or if the court agrees. But with the Bill of Rights, you do not. They did not use the Bill of Rights. Instead, they give you this constant depiction of, look at what this country is now. The, the churches and the, and the restaurants, the, the little small business, and they're trouncing our rights. But that's not the case. You don't, like, you don't see police smashing into the houses or smashing into the businesses and whatever. They're manipulating the, the political or the, the um, court system because they're going to get those injunctions, they're going to the court and saying, there's danger, there is danger. And the underlying cause is, is the bylaw infraction. And the bylaw is not dealing with danger. The, the bylaw is dealing with risk of danger. And risk of danger in law is very different than danger. So they're going to the court and they're saying, there's danger. There's danger, danger in uh, Adamson's restaurant. There's danger in the church. There's danger wherever they're trying to get an injunction. So, but uh, it it just uh, it, it just really stinks that this this is not the general rule of thumb. The police are not going in bashing in according to the bylaws. They're going in based on a fraudulent pl uh, judicial rulings. So that's that's not martial law. That's corruption that's that's infiltrators playing games with our mind to try and make us feel like our police 
are attacking us and our government is attacking us. And it's not so. It's certain individuals in the, in the system, in public health, and obviously Ford and, and Tory and things, people like that, their, their uh, activity is illegal and it's actually treasonous because it serves the purpose of a foreign body to undermine our sovereignty. That's treason. So we can't uh, logically take a handful of, 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 of uh, people who are acting treasonously and say, there, our whole government has no justice, we have no rights, we have no future, we're communists, we're beat. And that's what all these people, uh, uh, well, all, all these people that I consider controlled opposition, and I'll talk about that in a second, they're pumping that demoralization. They're telling you, look what they did to the restaurant, look what they did to the church, look what they did to this. This is a communist country, Chai Canada, blah, 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 okay? And they're, and they're tireless. It's like programming. It's like, look at this and look at this again and look at this again and look at this again. And the reason why they have to only use that little set of, of psyops is because that's all there is. There isn't 99 or, you know, what thousand businesses getting their doors bashed in and dragged out and closed, all like that. No, there's, there's a handful of, of situations that manipulated the law and overstepped the law, like Davila occupying the property, the hell is that? that? That's not legal. It's totally not legal. So his criminal charges, totally not legal. So they're manipulating them, the, the, uh, the public health protections um, <clears throat> because we do have provision for when there is danger, if there is actually danger. Like if, if somebody walks by and they smell gas in a house, and the city tries to come in and deal with it, and the person says, no, you're not getting in my house. They can go to the court and get a warrant to come in because there's danger. So they go so they go and swear or get an affidavit and present to the court that there is danger or they suspect there is danger and they need to investigate. But this, this is not the case. There, there was nobody in Adamson's that had COVID and they had no evidence of that. So there's not danger. It's a risk of danger, and there's everything's a risk. You drive a car, and it's a risk. We're going to arrest you because you, <laughs> you you might you might run into somebody, or you just lost your job, and people who steal normally don't have a job, so now you're at risk of stealing. So let's just arrest you. No, that's not the way the law works. They're perverting it. There's a handful of people that are orchestrating and then there's stupid people that are going along with this orchestration but it, it's not our system has not collapsed yet and we're not in communism yet it's we're up to our neck in it but we're not sunk yet and <clears throat> the reason I I believe that strongly is because the police regional police are not cooperating with it and I don't see any sign that the army is either but the police have publicly said uh, recently that they are not uh, going to enforce the stay-at-home orders, which which would have meant we would be in, in martial law via bylaws. But they're saying, no, the, the bylaws are illegal, so we're not doing it. And they have the, the option of uh, using the Canadian Bill of Rights instead of the Charter to refuse. Because the Charter, under the Charter itself, if we didn't have the Bill of Rights, the police could not refuse. Because... The bylaw would, would, would compel them until the judge decides there's not a good enough reason. <laughs> so, like, we'd be in big trouble. We'd be right down the river by the time the court ever even hears it. Never mind rules in our favor if they're, if they're ever going to. So, um, what, what I want people to do is analyze what you're seeing. Don't automatically ge generalize. Like, analyze it further is this like when you, like, I, like I said I got I got uh, totally uh, taken by the Adamson barbecue uh, fiasco but that wasn't the case it, it was it wasn't indicative that we're in martial law and the police are overstepping to that extent to blah 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 in fact like I said when the dust settled that was not Toronto police at all 
and it wasn't the trend that that resulted. Like you, you, if if we were if if in fact we had taken a step into martial law, you would have seen that scenario all over the place because there's lots of businesses open. By the way, uh, not enough. I mean, a lot more should open, but um, and, and they're not having these kind of experiences. The police are not entering. There, some of them are are getting the, uh, but just a few are getting this injunction business. But that's fightable because the injunction is based on danger, not risk. And plus, the the injunction itself violates rights in the Canadian Bill of Rights. So the justice of the peace and the judge cannot issue a ruling that violates your rights. They're completely bound by the Canadian Bill of Rights. And it's Canadian Bill of Rights applies to all orders, which is what comes out of the court, regulations, which relate to these bylaws, and laws. So none of this is legal, so it can be fought. And, uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to put the, uh, the uh, interview and the, the lecture from the KGB agent and you see even more of the of the uh, process. Like for example, he talks about um, sleepers, people that are come to Canada, uh, and they they don't engage much. You know, they I guess get a job and they just keep low key and nothing goes on for about ten or fifteen years, and all of a sudden they pop up in a prominent position. Um, they, he says in, in these lectures a couple of times, for example, preachers, and then they will become in, involved in, in, in controversial um, issues and, and uh, like to draw attention to themselves and to develop a movement and all of that. And that's, that's in fact, you know, what, what these, oh yeah, that's another, before I sign off, I wanted to talk about the controlled opposition and how they play into this. I, I mentioned it slightly earlier, but I want to express it further. Um, the the psyop uh, induces the fear, right, and and panic of people, and then uh, those those individuals that are involved in the controlled opposition they pump it and fuel it, you know, and they tell you over and over again that you're a communist country, you're Chai Canada. You're, you're, all your police are fascists and all your government's fascists and there's no justice and there's no peace and, and you're done, okay? And they don't say it like that as if they're against you and they're, they're doing it like with outrage. Like, this is a communist country, you know, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but that, that is a very demoralizing thing to say to people because communism is, is a state, a political state that has no rights. That's exactly what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. If you have rights, you have no communism. If you have communism, you have no rights. So by telling you, you are a communist country, they might as well say, you have no rights. And that is a bold-faced lie, because you do have rights. First of all, you have natural rights, inherent, inalienable rights given to us by God. Secondly, we have legal rights that support those natural, those natural rights, and that's in the Canadian Bill of Rights. So for those people to be telling you this is a communist country, they are lying to you. And whose interest would that be? Would that be in your interest or my interest or the, or the general public in Canada? Oh, no. That's in the interest of the communists. For us all to believe, like if they can create these little psyops with their controlled opposition people pumping in. And, and also, too, another element of controlled opposition is you want to draw in all the people that want to fight back. So that's another um, drama process that they do. The, these people that are supposed to be controlled op, they do some kind of dramatic thing, uh, action or, or or give some compelling information that's going to help everybody blah 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 and then that gets people's attention and they start following them but point being is that they're they're trying to control opposition so they're not going to lead you anywhere that's going to help us uh you know withstand the attack that we're under they're just going to keep you all busy you know saying we are all essential freedom freedom and running around in circles chasing your tail and whose interest is that in 
Mine? Yours? Anybody else in Canada? Not. That's in the interest of the communists. Keep, keep the people who want to fight for their freedom and, and want to protect this country, get them busy doing nothing, going nowhere. And that's exactly what, and being pumped, pumped to anger. And, it, and the idea would be like, if you want to help, attack your police and attack your government. Well, whose interest is that in? Yours? Mine? Anybody else in Canada? Not, because what you have there are crimes. You have, you know, uh, d discrediting the movement because it's violence. Um, and we don't have guns, for God's sake. So why provoke people to be attacking the government and the police who have guns? Like, duh, that's, that's not helping anybody to just pump, pump, pump. What your leaders should be doing is telling you you have rights, where to get them, like where to confirm them legally, and how to assert them legally. And you can insert them in almost every situation that this COVID, um, the, these COVID orders uh, come under, like for your house, for your business, for your church, for your protest, all of that. And even in these threats of, of forced vaccination or vaccination passports, all that stuff, we have rights that completely protect us from all that crap. And your leaders need to be telling you that. That's the most critical thing that they can do to help us fight back. Knowledge is power, remember? So distraction and bullshit is dispowering. So I'm not going to name names, but I want you guys to look around and see. Are the leaders going anywhere? Are the leaders telling you about your rights? Are your leaders trying to invoke anger and 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 uh, uh, anger and and potentially attacking your your um, your um, government and your police? If that's the case, drop them like a lead balloon because they are not your friends. They are your enemies, and they're they're what do you call it? like Trojan horses? Right? They're in there pretending they're on your side and they're actually your leader and they've done some ho heroic thing to demonstrate their super uh, leadership quality. Again, it's all a dramatic act to distract, manipulate, and defeat us. So that's it for the day. Any questions? Um, my uh, email is mjslegalservices.com at yahoo.com.